Here is a typical load cycle for a HV substation. This is a likely sequence of events that may happen after the main AC supply has failed, and we are now relying on the DC batteries to supply power to the equipment. Firstly, let's create a graph with current in amps on the left hand side and time in hours across the bottom. The first thing to add is the standing load. This is a fixed amount of current for the full duration of the battery discharge cycle. To calculate the standing load, we simply add up all the protection, SCADA, indication and control loads on the system. In this case, we've made the standing load 82 amps. Next, we add the dynamic loads. In the first case, we've calculated the load for all the circuit breakers tripping on the system and assumed a load current of 142 amps for one second. Following the circuit breakers tripping, we've assumed that all their spin charge motors recharge with a value of 102 amps for four seconds. Next, we've assumed that after a few hours, we've closed 30% of all the circuit breakers. And this event is repeated throughout the cycle. Finally, we want to make sure that there's enough energy left in the battery to trip all of the circuit breakers on the system. So we add this load right at the end of the cycle. The standing load is fairly easy to calculate and is the main factor in sizing the battery. The estimate should be fairly accurate as we are simply adding up all of the equipment loads, all of which are well known. This estimated value can then be checked by measuring the actual load current drawn by the DC system after the substation is energised. The dynamic loads are a bit trickier to estimate, but by using our knowledge of what happens to the system when the substation is disconnected from the network, we can come up with a reasonable assumption.